With the ATF miraculously approving forms inside of 24 hours, retailers are selling out of suppressors left and right. No better time than now to review the new Angstad Arms Vanquish. If you want to know what this gun is in a nutshell, think of it as a Glock mag fed AR9 SD. Most of us are familiar with the MP5 SD. This brilliant design combined a ported barrel with a suppressor that acted as a shroud going over that ported barrel, which would, in tandem, accomplish two things. First, it would obviously suppress a gunshot, and quite well, because suppression begins before the projectile leaves the muzzle. To put it another way, in conventionally suppressed firearms, the actual suppression of the shot doesn't start happening until the projectile hits the suppressor, which is almost always hanging off the end of the muzzle. But with the MP5 SD, the suppressor shroud would accept gases bled off from the ported barrel as the projectile made its way from the chamber, down the barrel, out the muzzle, eventually into a terrorist's face, probably. They served a second purpose. The MP5 SD would also slow down 9mm projectiles from supersonic, to subsonic speeds. This is important because supersonic projectiles not only tend to be louder after uncorking, but they can also create a mini sonic boom that's about as loud as a car horn as it makes its way down range. I know all of us have learned that the hard way. You get a new suppressor, you can't wait to try it out at the range. So you go outside, crack a few off in the apartment hallway, the neighbors get freaked out. They call the super because they think kids are setting off fireworks in the stairwell. Sucks when that happens. To many gun enthusiasts, the MP5 SD is therefore the holy grail of suppressed firearms, but even a semi-auto MP5 SD like those being made by B&T right now, gonna set you back 7,000 bucks or more. However, Angstad Arms has put together this little package. Yeah, not bad. That accomplishes much of what the MP5 SD accomplished through the use of a very similar system. That is to say, a ported barrel and a suppressor shroud. And Angstad Arms has taken this principle and applied it to a much more common, much more affordable platform, the AR-9, a straight blowback 9mm AR. Best of all, like I said, it accepts Glock magazines, meaning you can buy three or four Glock mags for the price of one MP5 magazine with the added bonus that unlike MP5 magazines, Glock mags won't rust if they're left in an environment with over 8% ambient humidity. The Vanquish, the MP5 SD, but an AR9 format. The MP5 SD for the common folk, if you will. The interesting part here, and there are pros and cons, is that the shroud suppressor used by the Vanquish has no baffles, unlike the MP5 SD. A con likely means the Vanquish is probably going to be louder than an MP5 SD. In my experience with both platforms, I think this is true, although admittedly it's been a few years since I've shot an MP5 SD and I haven't metered either one of them. However, one huge plus is that the Vanquish suppressor shroud is the easiest suppressor to maintain that you've ever owned. More or less, it looks like a maglite body and it simply unscrews from the barrel for easy maintenance. It's a steel tube, dude. Moreover, the simplicity of the design and the fact that it works with the AR platform means that you have the option to install the ported barrel and the shroud at home. Build it yourself if you want to, even if you have the slightest mechanical capability, unlike me. Angstat sells the kit for 650 bucks MSRP. Furthermore, the user can tune the Vanquish. The ports in the barrel are threaded, meaning that the user can install included plugs or remove them to fine tune for velocity and performance, an extremely innovative feature here. Now, of course, no one would argue that a straight blowback AR9 is going to give you a better overall shooting experience than the silky smooth, two-tonic, roller-delayed blowback MP5 SD, the Rolls-Royce. But then again, you can buy four of the Vanquish for the price of one MP5 SD build. But on the other hand, finding parts, accessories, customizing, servicing the gun, optics mounting, servicing the suppressor at home, going to be orders of magnitude easier with the Vanquish versus the MP5. In addition to everything else that I've mentioned, the Vanquish functions in a slightly different manner than the MP5 SD with different types of ammunition. In particular, while the MP5 SD is designed to be used exclusively with supersonic ammo, that is lighter 9mm, you have more flexibility with the Vanquish, 
but I'll step aside for a second and let Rich Angstadt, the inventor of this gun, explain as I caught up with him at SHOT Show. Yeah, explain that unlike the MP5SD where they're bleeding off all of that gas, right, and it was really designed around one particular round, we've got to make it accessible across the person who's just going to grab any kind of random ammo, right? So we're decreasing about 130 feet per second on 115, so we're getting everything right below that threshold, but we don't want to crush it by like 300 feet per second, and then right. you go to shoot a 147 or a 168, and it's just dribbling out the end of the gun. A bit of a compromise for the sake of versatility and to maintain a degree of velocity if you want. That's exactly it. And you see, it's a little more pronounced in the shorter version because obviously it's shorter than the full size. So this we're seeing about a 35 decibel reduction. Uh, whereas the big one's about a 38 decibel reduction, and those are both dry. The point here is that in theory, you're accomplishing much of the same thing with the Vanquish as you are with the MP5 SD. The Angstad Arms Vanquish being the Ford Mustang GT to the MP5 SD's BMW M5. There are important differences between the two, but overall functionality, purpose, and performance aren't as far apart as the price might suggest. Now I'm going to tell you my thoughts about the Vanquish and my range review after we go over the technical specs real quick. Before we do that, remember everyone, we're viewer supported. We didn't accept money from Angstat. We didn't even take a free gun to perform this review. These guns are getting sent back. It's very important that you support us via Patreon, Subscribestar, or Player. Look us up, TFB TV on those platforms. If you subscribe via Subscribestar or Player, we give away six $250 gift certificates to Top Gun Supply every single month that you can use for anything at their shop. We also give away four $100 Blue Alpha gift certificates, plus we have a couple of random giveaways every single month, exclusive patches for members, and more. So we give you something for supporting us. Please consider doing it so we can remain independent enough of that shit. The Vanquish comes in two lengths, a 10 and a half inch short barrel and a rifle variant with a 16 inch rifle length barrel. The rifle variant, of course, only requires one tack stamp for the suppressor and will deliver better sound suppression performance than the short barrel version. The SBR variant, it's a two stamp gun because it's a short barreled rifle and has a suppressed upper and it won't be as quiet, but it will squash over 40 decibels of reduction while it's much handier, lighter, and it looks way cooler. Speaking of performance, Angstad Arms has an extremely detailed webpage with tons of info, data, FAQs about the Vanquish, including detailed decibel readings and comparative testing. Angstad claims a 34 to 38 decibel reduction from the Vanquish while shooting dry and a 44 to 48 decibel reduction shooting wet. And those numbers are for the SBR variant and the rifle length variant, respectively. As I said, Engstat's got a great website for this gun, super detailed, including videos on how to run the gun's wet performance, much better wet, although if you're like me and you just kind of eyeball everything instead of reading the instructions, it's possible that water can work its way into the buffer tube and your suppressor then isn't the only thing that'll be running wet on the range. Let's talk about the guns themselves. They're high quality 7075 billet aluminum upper and lower match sets. The lower has a flared magwell, an oversized trigger guard, an extended magazine release, and a threaded bolt catch screw with a functioning last round bolt hold open. I will confess that our last round bolt hold open did not work 100% of the time, more like 98% of the time, but it's still a feature that isn't very common on AR9 lowers. Interesting to note, the uh, last round bolt hold open didn't function on either of those mags going dry. You know, not the end of the world. It also comes with Angstat's own aftermarket trigger with a nickel Teflon finish that's much better than mil spec. It's got a top of the line Radian Raptor charging handle and a Radian Talon 45 degree safety selector, B5 system stock and pistol grip, BCM Mod 3 vertical foregrip, bolt carrier group finished in QPQ black nitride, and an aero precision handguard. One thing I noticed in my review copy is that the QD sockets in the Aero handguard won't work because there isn't enough clearance between the outer shroud and the handguard for the swivel to snap into place. But Angstat fortunately packages the Vanquish with an M-lock socket that you can attach anywhere along the handguard and use a sling swivel just fine. Some of you will be pissed 
that sites are not included. Some of you won't care and would rather save the money. Argue about it in the comments. Me personally, don't give a shit one way or the other. If you want a complete firearm, MSRP is $2,175, or you can get just the upper for $1,225. Again, that's MSRP. And as I mentioned earlier, for $650, you can get the suppressor and barrel combo. Build it out yourself. Now let's talk about performance on the range. As I mentioned earlier, I don't have 10 to 15 grand to buy a proper sound meter to appropriately test these. So you're getting just my take with my tinnitus riddled 41 year old ears i won't lie to you the first time i got out in the range with this the short barrel version shooting it dry with subsonic ammo less than impressed um actually to me that was not what i would call hearing safe so not as quiet as i hoped it would be while it still sounded really good downrange at my ear, it was loud enough that I needed to actually use ear protection. I talked with Rich about that at SHOT, and he said, James, you're doing it wrong, which is totally unsurprising. If I want optimum performance, tell me what ammo do I use? Do I shoot this yes. wet? Do I shoot this dry? And what configure? I, I just want to get the quietest thing possible. Quietest thing possible, open up all of the ports because they are um, tunable. You can put screws in there, close them if you want to preserve velocity. Keep those wide open. 147 is always going to be quieter than 115 because of powder burn. And then if you really want to be ridiculous, like 50 decibel reduction, put a little wire pull gel or some water in there and you will just be blown away. It's the, the quietest experience you'll ever have shooting. I was accustomed to using supersonic ammunition only through the MP5 SD. I thought it was the same thing here. Rich told me that, yes, the Vanquish works well enough with supersonic ammo, but even better with subsonics. On top of that, Rich told me that running the suppressor wet makes a huge difference, which you all understand now after I just ran the numbers by you from the Vanquish website. Long, dry, my prison nickname. And long and wet. If you're truly getting over 40 decibels of reduction, that is quite impressive. And I believe those numbers after I took it back out to the range. Bear in mind, I've had this gun since December. And I shot it again with the rifle length version, wet with subsonic ammo. In other words, if you get the SBR version and you shoot supersonic ammo through it dry, you might be a little underwhelmed with the performance. However, if you take either version out with subs, you throw a little water in there, maybe a little suppressor gel, now you're cooking. Oh yeah, yeah, that's super quiet. The Vanquish is built using top-of-the-line components from an all-star list of manufacturers I just rattled off. Radian, B5, Aero Precision, BCM, Angstat. So, as you can imagine, handling a performance is outstanding. The Vanquish doesn't rely on its one gimmick, its one trick. The baffleless suppressor to get your attention by itself. By all indications, it's actually a fantastic AR9 before you even start talking about the suppressor. This is just a high quality gun. In fact, I think the Vanquish stands in contrast with the Angstat MDP-9, which I know you guys are gonna bring up in the comments, so I'll address it here. I reviewed that a year or two ago. Wasn't very impressed with it. Performance was so-so, while well, the price is pretty high. You're saying, James, 2,100 bucks still sounds like a lot of money, but let's discuss the alternatives. Now, if I can tell you something personal real quick, I happen to love the BNT APC-9 SD as an alternative to the Vanquish, but that's gonna come in at about a thousand bucks more. Again, personally, I slightly prefer the APC 9SD to the Vanquish for several reasons. One, I'm a B&T fanboy. I love almost anything the Swiss powerhouse turns out. Two, I don't need to run a gun with a buffer tube, don't need this bullshit AR stock, I'll have a smaller firearm. Three, I like stunting on the pores. That said, those of you who might be saying, wow, the Vanquish is pricey. The only true integrally suppressed alternatives I can think of right now are anywhere between 150 and 350% more expensive, which makes the Vanquish an excellent gun in its own right 
and a great option if you want something like this. Guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe because we're bringing you more content from TFB TV. Take care.